ivermectin is um, a very well-known medication uh, known really for combating parasites. In fact, it it's sort of a very famous medication because it transformed the health status of a good portion of the globe uh, after it was invented. The discoverers won the Nobel Prize. It eradicated these endemic parasitic infections from much of Africa, Southeast Asia, South America. Um, so it's a highly effective antiparasitic. What's been known for about 10 years, it also has this tremendous activity against numerous viruses. Multiple studies over about 10 years show that it works against Zika and Dengue and West Nile, all, all in the lab. There's not good clinical data yet on those viruses, but certainly it's, it's known now as an antiviral agent. What drew your attention to ivermectin in uh, fighting COVID-19? So the uh, organization I'm a part of, it's a close group of colleagues. We're some of the most highly published uh, physicians in our specialties. And we got together and we've just studied uh, every aspect of COVID that we could for our patients. We've really closely followed all the trials around a number of therapeutics. And around October, Professor Marek, my colleague and a mentor, he kind of founded our group. He saw uh, what I would call a signal around ivermectin. Many people People have been talking about ivermectin since the spring and summer, but he started to see the first set of trials, which kind of broke free from all of the other trials, which is so many of the other things that we've studied are really have very unsatisfying results. But ivermectin was like consistently positive in those first few trials. What were the results in a nutshell? Just in the randomized controlled trials alone, you see repeated results showing dramatic reductions in death rates. So a sur survival is greatly increased when you use ivermectin. The need for hospitalization is greatly decreased. The time to recovery is greatly decreased, as well as the time until viral clearance. And so that's just in the treatment trials. There's a whole other set of trials, which looks at prevention. You know, ivermectin, it, it attaches to the, what's called the spike protein, and it prevents entry. And so patients who are on ivermectin, this has been shown in, in country by country analysis as well in the, many of the countries where they have routine ivermectin prophylaxis, the case rates and deaths are far lower than in other countries. And you see that in the trials. People who take ivermectin regularly, their chances of getting COVID are oftentimes in the low single digits. And then sometimes in the trials that show when you take it every week, nobody gets COVID. And so it's pretty dramatic results in the prevention as well as the treatment. What is your reaction to the WHO's uh, recommending uh, yeah. people not to use ivermectin for COVID? That is really the problem that my group um, and other groups are trying to address. There are many critical therapies that are not being recognized. Ivermectin is just one example, but we know of a number of effective therapies that are not given the attention they deserve uh, and or the research and support and guidance. Your group believe that ivermectin can end the pandemic, at least that was a part of the statement that was released. How so, and isn't it a bit ambitious? If you look at Mexico right now, compared to December, when they started a national test and street strategy centered around ivermectin, their hospitals were full and overrunning. They were in what is essentially a humanitarian crisis, the same state that India is in now. And if you look at Mexico, and you look at their occupancy data of the hospitals, the hospitals are empty. They have 25% occupancy. We're seeing it play out in a number of countries. Panama is the same. Uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, all of them are showing these dramatic reductions in deaths and hospitalization. So it, it's, a, it's a highly effective treatment. So it's about uh, diversifying the tools, actually. Oh, you need more than the vaccines, right? So first of all, huge parts of the world are not going to see vaccines for uh, quite some time. The efficacy of the vaccines against maybe developing variants is of, of a question. And there's also lots of vaccine hesitancy. The, the vaccines need another tool. We think that this is a bridge to vaccination as well as a safety net. So when you say what's happening in India, how do you feel? I feel saddened that this information is not available. Now that's changing. So if you look at what's happening in India this week, already two large states, so the state of Goa and Karnataka, they have already approved a, t a test and treat strategy. 
Uttar Pradesh, which is the most populous state in India, 234 million people, they're one of the most best performing regions in the world. And that's because they adopted ivermectin in early treatment back in August. And if you look at Uttar Pradesh right now, although their cases and deaths are rising, it's almost all driven from a migrant flux from Mumbai, where the outbreak started. But if you look at Uttar Pradesh, they're going to train stations, airports, bus stations, they're testing and treating, and they are controlling the pandemic. Their performance is far better than the rest of India. And so I think you're going to see India also gain control and start to look better. Dr. Pierre Corey, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lenore. Thank you for having me.